Cubs pitcher Jeff Smarja joining us in the uh, New York City Man Cave, taking a look at our batting stances. You ever looked at a batting stance and said you could tell that a guy could hit or not hit by just his batting stance? Um, you know, you'd be surprised a lot of baseball is uh, just your perception of the other guy's confidence and, and what, kind of what he's... Um... Have you ever seen fear in a hitter? Um, usually after, you know, if you throw a pitch, it's you know, something they don't appreciate, then uh, they're usually a little bit. But, you know, by this time, uh, not, not too many guys are very fearful. If they're, they're up there, uh, you know, doing a job. And even if they are, they're usually trying to put on a, put on a show that they're not too scared. Uh, give me the new lingo for, uh, like, pitching lingo. Pitching lingo. Yeah, what kind of words you got for, you know, fastball, curveball, slider? Uh, chase heater is the new word right now, you know? Chase? Chase <laughs> heater? You just throw that fastball right on top of the plate. You know, you get a guy trying to... Just trying to hit it over the fence. You just okay. nope. I don't want to do that. Just throw it right down low. He's swinging, swinging out of his pants. So he's he's chasing the heater down low. Chasing the heater. Okay. And then he chased the heater up. Okay. So what else yeah. you got? Curveball? Any uh, any new? I don't lingo? throw a curveball. You know, I can't throw a spinning slider. So I'm more of a fastball splitter kind of guy. And yeah, but I, I don't mess around with the spinning stuff too much. And I start getting out of my game, and but it doesn't help so out. So you so don't well. you don't throw a yacker? I do not throw a, a Charlie. yacker. I do not Uncle throw oh, no Uncle Charles coming for me. Yeah. No. I like to see them, though. They're fun. You know, those 65-mile-hour ones. I wish I had one. I'm waiting until maybe, you know, later on in the career we start throwing in that <laughs> <Yeah>. big. <laughs> Once the arm starts getting a little yeah. uh, a little squeaky, you know, then you start dropping in that nice soft You could one. be like a right-handed Jamie Moyer. <laughs> I just saw Jamie the other day, but uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, I don't know if I'm going to play that long. He played for a long time. Have you ever uh, thrown salad? Have you ever heard that expression? Thrown salad? No, yeah. I have not. Yeah, you know, like Jamie Moyer threw salad. Okay, just you know, threw it up there, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know, floated around, <laughs> yeah. and, and they hit as hard as they could, and yeah. didn't go anywhere. Yeah. yeah, no, that's it's a smart tactic. It's a, you know, it, it's unprecedented, but sometimes guys, uh, they they perfect it like Jamie, and they go a long time. Hardest you ever thrown? Uh, hundred, hundred one. You know, there's a lot of different reports out there. You know, those scouts, you can't really trust them. Does so, that mean anything? No, no, it. Uh, Ego. It, yeah, I mean, you know, you try and take the ego out of out of pitching as much as you can. You start trying to pitch with your ego, and I've I've been plenty of trouble with that over the years, and and it usually doesn't help out. You know, it feels good to throw that hard. You know, it's it but but is that you where you take it. extra time in between the pitch when there's a hundred up there on the board? Like you just stop and let it soak in in case people need to get a photo op there of you and you. Well, you try and check out the radar gun as slyly as possible. You know, right? So it's kind of keep your head down. You just <laughs> you give a little look up when you think you threw it pretty good, but. You know, the, the problem is when you do that and you look up and it says 92, you know, they're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, ego, when's the last time, when you're talking about, so you're challenging somebody, like, when's the last time it came back to haunt you? Uh, I mean, the, the best I could probably think of is probably last year, Nationals, uh, eight and two-thirds, air, so I'm going out to try and close the game, uh, LaRoche comes up, uh, I get to 0-2, you know, and, oh, what a great time to end this game with a with a fastball as oh, hard no. as I can, and... <laughs> Well, it just so happens that LaRoche is one of the best fastball hitters in the game. So he steps steps back, heater up and in, you know, onto Sheffield. <laughs> I get taken out of the game, eight and two thirds, you know, a little pat on the butt. And then LaRoche is trotting around the bases with that nice home run swing that he has. So, you know, times like that, and you, you know, you learn from those for sure. But uh, I guess you got to mess up a couple times before you realize. The Cub Cubs pitcher, Jeff Smarger, joining us, New York City Man Cave, Dan Patrick Show. The sound of a home run is what? Sounds good. It sounds really good. Not when you're throwing. Not when you're throwing, but, you know, there's a little part of you that, that's but, – uh, but you, you, you got that pretty but, good. But you know, like, if, if you don't even watch where it goes. Yeah, at uh, Wrigley, I mean, it's just a trajectory off the bat. You know, when you when you throw a pitch, you realize it's up a little bit, and then you see how it comes off the bat in that park, you know, new ball, please. That, that thing's gone. But, you know, other places, you know, we just came from St. Louis, plays really true. You know, that you got to kind of pay a little more attention and, and, and who's hitting. You know, that's a big park. And, you know, you know where those places are where you can kind of get away with uh, some stuff. But, you know, Wrigley, Milwaukee, Arizona, you know, I haven't, I haven't played here yet. But um, I'm assuming from what I've seen, Soriano loves to go right center over there and mm -hmm. dump it over the wall. A lot of guys do. So, uh, we'll where see. do you hide your pine tar? Where do I hide my pine tar? Well, yeah. It's hidden, so I, I oh, don't know. Oh, so it's just, okay, you know. secret. No, I don't really use too much. There's a lot of different things, you know, you can do to get a grip. Those, a lot of times these balls we get, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of like cue balls, you know, on, on a pool table. But the seams, I thought, used to be raised. They're, yeah, they're, they're not. They're, those are, yeah, those are minor league balls, but uh, the, the big league balls are, yeah, they're not very much raised. They, they want those things to fly when they get up in the air. So you got to 
you know, do what you can, whatever works, a little sweat, a little dirt. Um, Should you, you know. be able to have pine tar on your glove quietly? Uh, um, do you have a problem? Yeah, I, mean, I have no. If the guy, if the guy I'm facing, you know, is using a little pine tar, I got no problem with it. It's, you know, it's more of when it's something gaudy, you know, something obvious, and you know, whether it's on the hat or or you see a guy. It's more about doctoring up the ball too, you know. When you start cutting the ball, you start scuffing the ball. That's when when it really affects the pitch. A little pine tar doesn't affect what the pitch does unless you're putting a big clump on the side of the ball, <laughs> you know. How do you how do you scuff? How do you cut a ball? Uh, over the over the years, a lot of guys have done a lot of different ways. Um, you know, a lot of times you can do it on your belt. You can do it uh, with something you brought with you in your glove. You know, a lot of guys will just grow their thumbnail out real long, take a lot of prenatal pills, and makes your nails <laughs> real strong. <laughs> and then you and then you grow out that thumbnail right, and then you shave it down and. Really? Yeah, you give a little. It just takes. You'd be surprised on. It just takes a little bit. Just, just a nick. Just a nick, and it'll, you can move that ball. So you know too much about this, Jeff. It's passed down. It's, it's, <laughs> is that what it is? You know, you can know it, but it doesn't mean you use it. You know, again, it goes with that curveball thing. The older you get, you know. What about tricks, hitters? What What are hitters doing? Um. Well, other than drilling a hole in their bat and shoving wine cork in it, I don't know. Probably not too much. <laughs> Could you tell if somebody has done something with their bat? No, absolutely not. The, the, the way they do it, it, no, 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 you can't tell. The only difference is it doesn't add more pop. It just makes the bat a little lighter, you know, so they can have a little quicker bat speed. A lot of everybody thinks they put super balls in there and, it, you know, yeah. it makes it fly. But it doesn't, that doesn't do anything. It just lightens the bat quicker. It's like golf, you know, quicker head speed. Yeah. Makes the ball go farther. Uh, I, I've often said that Mark Grace, if I factored in that he played at Wrigley all those years and all the partying that went on <laughs> after the games, that he put up Hall of Fame numbers. I mean, I, I got to <laughs> skew it a little bit here, Jeff, right? because, I mean, look at the sliding scale. I mean, how dangerous is mm -hmm. playing for the Cubs it is, home you know, games? It is. Being a young kid, I, I can't say that, you know, I didn't go through my fair share of, uh, hey, Jeff, you know, <laughs> suavemente, Jeff, you know, slow down, <laughs> slow down a little bit, you know. <laughs> well, I was like, well, I'm 22. You guys gave me all this money. It's not my fault. I live in Chicago. I mean, you know, I'm just innocent bystander here and all. But I had a great time. And, you know, you learn. You, you know, when you're 22, you can go out and then wake up at 9, 8, 30, 9 o'clock and feel great and pitch. You know, you're 26, 27, you know, you start turning that page and, and all of a sudden uh, those mornings come a little quicker. You don't recover as fast. And, you know, you learn as a young kid that uh, you need to really balance what you're doing off the field with on the field, if you want to perform up to the level that you're demanded to in Chicago, which Did is, you ever is a high level. Did you ever pitch for the hangover? Uh, man, I, you know, I, I never, never took a breathalyzer going out there, but, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe uh, possibly, <laughs> maybe I'm, some I'm fumes there anything, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they, Gibson's can, you can sit at Gibson's oh, for a long time yeah, and, and you drink can. some wine, yes, and, you, can. And, you know, and yeah. talk about the good old days at Ditka and Peyton and, uh, you know, and those guys. Well, it, it depends if you had a, a great game, you want to sit and reminisce. If you had a bad game, you want to drown your sorrows. There you go. It's a win-win, right? Yeah. Yes. Do you socialize? Do you have friends who are hitters? Absolutely. Yeah. I think sometimes the best things you can do is talk to hitters, man. Cause they, they but all... they're going to lie to you. Uh... You know, again, we go back to that that wine, you know, beer kind of. Oh, so they get just liquored feed, up? Just liquor them up on the plane and <laughs> tell me tell me what you can't hit. How about that? But, yeah, everybody talks. I think that's a great part about baseball is is uh, the downtime. You know, I remember playing football. There's no downtime. You're meeting. You're practicing. You're meeting again. You're walking through. You're sleeping. You're getting treatment. You know, baseball, there's all this time when you get to sit around and talk about the game with, with your buddies. Um you know, I had a lot of these older guys I played with that I learned from, you know, and, and that's the best information you get. You know, coaches are great and they're doing their job, but they don't have half the information that, uh, you know, you could get talking to Soriano or, or uh, Beltran or guys like that, you know, that, hey, you know, you can in five minutes, you can cover a whole team and, and you know, and how you pitch to them oh, and cool. what they've done. So, all right, great. we'll come back. Can you stay? Absolutely. I, I want to ask you about uh, Notre Dame football. Uh, what's going on at Northwestern unionizing? Awesome. Uh, do you cry when you see the movie Rudy? No, I don't watch it. What? I don't watch it. You I, did? I watched the old one, you know, with Rockney. The old one. Oh, did you cry at we that? Went for the Gipper. Oh, of course. Oh, okay. no, actually. But you didn't no. cry at Rudy? Of a crier. No, man. Rudy. We'll talk about that later. All right. Here we go. 15 before the hour. Well, here we go again.
Joe Montana did it, uh, ruined everybody. We thought it was a documentary. That Rudy was a documentary. <laughs> this was a great interview. It was, yeah. <laughs> Jeff, was, you, you really upset Seton when you when you. Started. All right, this is the best movie that's ever been printed. Well, <laughs> it's the that. greatest documentary it of is. our time. It is a documentary. Mockumentary. It, uh, fif- <laughs> mockumentary. <laughs> 15, 15 before the hour, we'll continue with the Cubs pitcher, Jeff Smarger, after this. How often does uh, Notre Dame football come up with your career there? Often, you know, I, I was really surprised, uh, you know, once I left how when you're a young kid there, you kind of put up with everything and do the media, but you don't really realize the scope of it all until you leave. And you really realize how many how many people it affects, whether they love them or they hate them. It's just such a polarizing team. And, uh, you know, it's kind of crazy. You always so I always have to stay up on my my information, even though I don't really watch it that religiously, you know, in the off season, I have to do it just for the simple fact of being asked about it. How are we going to be this year? Samarja, you know. <laughs> Uh, pretty good, you yeah. know. So you got to do your research, I guess. But when you played, at what point did you say, "My mm-hmm. my future is baseball, not football"? Because you were going um, to be a, probably a first round draft pick. Yeah, you know, I'd actually told um, Coach Weiss and and a couple other guys that I was playing football. You know, that was you know my junior year that this was my plan. You know, I wanted to go play baseball and try it out. And then I went and played baseball. So then I signed in '06 after my junior year and went and played out in Boise and Peoria and and, and short season and. In low A, and um, even then going back to Notre Dame, I still couldn't stop thinking about baseball. It was really weird. Like it just really, um, it really captured me that that summer when I went and played and saw what baseball was about: traveling, playing every day. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I just I, I've, I've always been a happy guy when I go to the baseball field. You know, and, and I always associated that with when I go to the football practice field. I wasn't <laughs> as happy, so I was like, well, it's a pretty simple decision after that, and. I knew it was going to be tough. I was going to have to give up one I loved regardless, and and uh, it was kind of a catch-22. You know, ended up being uh, only having to watch 16 games instead of 162 and, and missing them makes it a little easier. Um, as far as, let's say, taking the mound at Wrigley mm-hmm. or running out of the tunnel at Notre mm-hmm. Dame, describe the difference. Um, the only difference, I'd say, is you're by yourself on the mound. I think so. It's, it's a little different mentality. The excitement, the emotions are the same. You know, it's that that feeling in your stomach, almost like you're kind of you're gonna kind of hurl. Almost, you're so you know, you're just you have so much emotions going. You're so excited, and you feel the stadium. Um, now in football, you can kind of just let it go, right? You have your teammates there with you. You just you can scream and yell and do everything you want, and really just release all that emotion. Whereas baseball, when you get to that point, you have to pull back. You know, and, and so you get on the mound, you have to take a deep breath. You can't ride it. <laughs> so it's a little different, but, you know, up until that point, it's exactly the same. The, this weird, eerie feeling of coming out of these hallways that are 100 years old and yeah. have a lot of history and they smell kind of moldy. Well, not and, a lot of history at Wrigley. No, no, no. History, just actual <laughs> history. Not a lot you of know, good not, history. Not exactly. Not <laughs> notable, nothing of note, but tons of history, you know, and you and you do know the names that have come, you know, through that place and, um, you know, guys like Fergie Jenkins and, and, and Ernie Banks that are always around and hanging out and Billy Williams. And, um, you know, so so it's there, you know, and you feel it. It's um, it, like I said, you, I just had to learn how to change that and, and kind of just hold that emotions in. But it's fun. You know, it's it's something uh, you don't get to do all the time. And so you really enjoy it. But Notre Dame was over. You know, it's, it was fast and can't go back to it. You think you're going to be traded? Um. You know, I, I don't know. I, I think it really depends on, on how this team, uh, you know, turns out this season. I, I think it's looking like it. You know, I mean, I don't want to say anything for sure because I don't want to be traded. You know, I want to I want to play my career in Chicago with the Cubs. I love being there. Um, it, it's a team that got me out of football. It, you know, I fell in love with them. To but that eventually point. you get tired of losing, Jeff. Without a doubt. You know, I mean, and I've said that from the beginning. The, the only reason, you know, we're at where we now is because of that situation. You know, if if, I, if it's a different situation and you know we're winning, competing for the playoffs every year, you know, I, I think I think a deal's already done and and I'm there for a long time. But um, I want to win. I know I know how old I am. I know I know when prime years are. I know when it, everything starts changing. You know, and I'm right there. And and um, you know, I don't I don't enjoy rebuilding. I think in the, in the when you play in the highest level of your sport, every year should be should be devoted to winning that year because you don't know how long it's going to last. You don't know how many chances you're going to get to, to feel this way and feel good and, and, and play. So, you know, I want to win. That's my number one goal. I don't care about anything else but winning. What happens when you take the mound and Jeter's at the plate? <sighs> Bring the right fielder in. If he hits it over his head, it's probably gone, you know. Uh, <laughs> pitch him in and, and, and sliders out of the zone. But uh, try and 
not pay too much attention to it till it's over. You know, I, I think you get caught up sometimes in facing these guys that are legends, you know, living legends on the field. And when was the last and, time somebody got in the batter's box and you went, holy smokes? Um, oh, man. It, the last time it really just jumps out just because it's fresh on my mind is, is, is Barry Bonds in spring training because I was coming off of playing the Sugar Bowl and – in New Orleans, and then I went straight to spring training. I was then, at that Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Uh, were you? Yeah, that yeah. wasn't. That wasn't. No, that was. That we was tried to good. fake punt fourteen nothing. <laughs> you that, know, that and then Jamarcus well. Russell. Well, he peaked. He peaked yes, he that did. day. <laughs> that day he peaked right there. I we see, saw it. So you're facing Bonds, <laughs> and you're yeah, and you know, uh, you kind of just go blank. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, I remember watching this guy for so long. The kind of like you were doing with his swing, you know, practice choking up and practicing his swing when he was with the Pirates, and you know, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're in this situation, and now you got to face the guy. Oh, he singled through the hole, but at least he didn't take me deep, right? Uh, we we're short on time. I want to ask you about this with Northwestern trying to unionize. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being a former mm -hmm. college athlete, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's great. You know, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of it exactly. What they're, you know, how serious they're trying to get. If they're trying to go NCAA wide, if they're just trying to get their foot in the door, but. I just feel like um, with the length of a football career, you know, the you should be able to be compensated earlier in your career. That, just simply for the fact that you're not going to play that long. So you need to take advantage of those years when you're able and willing to do it. And, you know, now whether it's something like hockey where you're drafted out of high school and you go to college but a team still has your rights, you know, yeah. and maybe that signing bonus or whatever is deferred till later, or maybe it's just, I, I don't know, There's I think there's a lot of different options. To say it's just a paycheck that you're handing these guys – I think that gets a bad rap. I don't think that's what needs to happen. I don't think handing these kids, you know, you gave me 1500 bucks when I was in college. <laughs> you might not have seen me again. So, you know, maybe something that's put off through time, but there's got to be some way these kids can compensate just for the simple fact of what they're sacrificing, you know, for, for everybody to enjoy. I enjoy it. I think everybody loves watching college football and, and, you know, we need to see it continue on and stay strong. He's uh, Jeff Smarja right now with the Cubs, but he'll be traded this year. <laughs> guaranteed. Uh, hey, thank you for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having you me. You were guys. great. You were Love great. Love being here. Yeah. All right. Um, and good luck against Jeter. Appreciate it. I send one right at his chin. You know, yeah. yeah. And then no, give him the yak. No, not Jeter. You get tossed. If you put a ball anywhere in his vicinity, you're done. Yeah, you're going to be gone. <laughs>